I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. You come to see me sooner. My fault for being hard to find, I guess. Hmm. What's with the password and the sneaking around? Are you in trouble or something? I'm the best thief in the business, not the most famous. Need to watch my step to keep it that way. I also needed to make sure all this was legit. And I have no doubts now. You're the real Commander Shepard. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition right here on Missledyne Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Mass Effect video. And I do apologize that the rate of these coming out has kind of slowed down. Uh, there is a big race to World First right now happening in the world of Warcraft, and my time is split uh between streaming this race to world first and of course youtube stuff uh so i've just i've i've just been so enthralled by this race so apologies apologies i'm gonna do my best to uh, keep this coming out consistently so huge shout out to those of you watching the premieres every monday wednesday friday around 2 p.m eastern sincerely appreciate you guys please don't forget to leave a like and comment on these videos it really does help the channel it helps these videos it knocks them up into algorithms ever since you guys have started actually leaving uh comments in the comment section and not on the live chat it's actually increased the views of these videos by a pretty substantial amount so thank you guys so much for that so let's jump into it in the last episode we obviously got here to the citadel uh experienced what we could around here did a little bit of shopping but there was a lot going on and it was a lot of talking and it was a little boring and a little bit long of an episode so I wanted to save the rest of the Citadel for later however upon review and uh Dylan kind of pointing some stuff out in the comments uh as well as uh, just me just not thinking about it we only picked up the sushi the sushi of the this this quest from from these Krogan by by overhearing them uh, the quest with the Quarian who was being accused of stealing the credit shit, I'm actually going to redo that. And part of that is because, because of the face cam, I got distracted and missed the, <laughs> I got distracted by myself, and I missed the Paragon check in that. But also, I completely forgot that, uh, uh, Tally, uh, actually has some unique dialogue during that quest. You know, if we ever get her on our squad, spoiler, we get her on our squad. Uh, so, um, I want to come back with her on our team and not miss a paragon option. So, uh, but we do have other things so that we could do here. Maybe a shotgun. I like more the shopping. Rifle. It's like a non stop barrage of death if you can hit anything. <laughs> That's true. He's got a point. The assault rifle doesn't make it easy. What can I do for you? So this is uh, let's see let's hear about Rodom Expeditions. Tell me about your services. We sell quality hunting supplies, which you'll need when you purchase one of our adventure travel packages. Imagine it, human. The break of day. You and your team have been stalking a Shafa for five days. In that time, it's killed four men. You see it? Line it up. Take the shot. Blam! It's down. You're the hero. That's what we offer. Not a vacation, but an experience. Okay, uh, that seems like a lot. If everything's done by catalog, why are you here? Rodham believes in salesmanship, the personal touch. Some say we're old fashioned. We recognize that adventure traveling is a niche, a small, tight knit community. Sure, it is. Uh, anyways, so you can investigate a little bit more and hear about weapons, weapon restrictions. Were restricted on the Citadel now. Carrying them around is. Selling them isn't. We store them in off-site containers and deliver them to your ship. People who Perfect. have permission to carry, like CSEC, can walk out with them. Nice. Do you want an endorsement? Of course he does. He wants Your expeditions might be a little tame for me. Tame? A human can hardly take down a feral Varen, let alone a Shatha. Who do you think you are? Well, my name's Shepard, and I... The Shepard? The one that put down Saren Arterius? Yeah. Oh, you do know me. By the spirits, Shepard, in my store. I don't suppose I could convince you to record an advertisement for me. Free sure stuff. Could. Can we work out a discount? A discount? I'd name my firstborn after you if you ask. Can we record it now? Just speak towards my console. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. That's <laughs> true. No other gun shop has that kind of endorsement. Okay, but every other shop on the Citadel does, my dude. So apologies for that. Anyways, uh, so we can actually buy a ton of different things here 
Uh, the sniper rifle damage, just increasing the amount we do with sniper rifles, heavy pistol damage, submachine gun damage, uh, offhand ammo pack, which is going to increase our spare ammo capacity by 10%. We have a vest here that we can purchase. It's actually fairly cheap. We're going to go ahead and buy that one. Uh, and then we also have a sniper rifle that is DLC, the incisor sniper rifle here, which is pretty good uh, and, and can be pretty powerful. And then we also have a sentry interface, uh, which is another little headpiece that we can do and an umbra visor uh the thing that i would recommend at this point if you have the money for it is the weapon upgrade for the submachine gun damage submachine guns are very strong and are going to be pretty useful we'll come back to buy everything obviously but we're also going to buy this offhand ammo pack just because that's that's just going to help and we can afford that it's cheap so we're working towards uh fully upgrading a weapon which as you just saw we got one out of seven on there uh, and one out of five on the submachine gun itself, which is pretty dope. And we got the offhand Have ammo you pack. Tried Galaxy of Fantasy yet? Oh, I love that game. And this is like it's a guy that sells D&D really games. I hear it has 11 billion players now. Nice. Do you have any games you'd like to trade in? You get two credits toward a new game. Two whole credits? Wow. It's like GameStop. Welcome. The Zakara Ward Promenade offers upscale shopping and entertainment options for the discerning visitor. So there are uh, some entertainment, entertainment things we can check out up here. The Dark Star is a small but popular night spot offering intoxicants, gambling, and exotic dancing. Nice. You know we're going there, what man. Are in this area? Rodham Expeditions sells high-grade weapons as well as adventure travel packages to the galaxy's most dangerous destinations. That's it. That's the only store that's on here, apparently, is, is Rodum. So, Dark Star, Dark Star, obviously, being the place you want to go. And that, my friends, is Kalisa Al-Jalani, the person that you saw Renegade Shepard just pop in the face. Uh, uh, of course, Commander Corey Shepard would never do anything like that. So, uh, we also can talk to Jacob. It's been years since I've been to the Citadel. Never changes, does it? No matter how long you're gone. Comforting to some people, I guess. Living in denial that all this could end. Okay, that was a little heavy, dude. But yeah, so you will get those moments if you kind of walk around and check. Uh, and depending on your squad, sometimes you'll have a, a conversation that you can have just by examining the arrow, uh, the area, similar to actually what we had in Mass Effect One uh, that you might remember. So let's go ahead and talk People to uh, want to hear your story, Shepard. Kalisa Algelani. What a jerk. Kalisa been seen in Algelani, Westerland News. <laughs> <laughs> I interviewed you two years ago when you first became a Spectre. You yeah. presented your case very well on camera. Do you have a minute? Uh, you made me look bad. What, so you can try to do another smear job on me? Now, Shepard, you may object to my methods, but we're on the same side. Your bad, your news. I just want to give your story its due. Do you? Sources claim you were at the heart of the Presidium during the Battle of the Citadel. It's fair to say the course of the battle hinged on your words. If true, you told Admiral Hackett to assist the Destiny Ascension, costing hundreds of human lives. I've had enough of your disingenuous assertions. Wait, I didn't mean to... I wish I'd done that the first time we met. You bitch! I'll make what? sure everyone in the Alliance sees that. I'm Doctor. Look at her eyeball. Did. did we get it? Nice. Oops. All right, let's let's try this again, shall we? <laughs> without without uh punching her in the face. I saw the Renegade option. And I was like, I have to show them. I have to show them this. I just I have to. Sources claim you were at the heart of the Presidium during the Battle of the Citadel. If true, you told Admiral Hackett to assist the Destiny Ascension, costing hundreds of do no renegades. Don't do it. Securing the continued dominance of the Citadel Council. So we can uh, use actual intimidate or or charm options here, and we're gonna charm. The Turians lost twenty cruisers. Figure each had a crew of around three hundred. The Ascension, the Asari dreadnought we saved, had a crew of nearly ten thousand. But surely the human cost. The Alliance lost eight cruisers. Shenyang, Emden, Jakarta, Cairo, Seoul, Cape Town, Warsaw, Madrid, and yes, I remember them all. Everyone in the Fifth Fleet is a hero. 
the Alliance owes them all medals. The Council owes them a lot more than that. And so do you. Commander Shepard, first human Spectre. Hero of the Battle of the Citadel. Check bid. We get it? Great. Bull rushed on my own show. Hell yeah, you were. Hell yeah, you were, Kalisa. That, okay, that was, to me, that was way, way more impactful than just punching her in the face. Yeah, okay, punching her in the face, it was a little funny. Uh, but, <laughs> that, I mean, you can't beat that, right? It's so good. So, we can go to the Dark Star. This is the, the one of the places we have left on the Citadel that we can check out before we go do anything else. It is so loud, hello? Now, there is an option to talk to Miranda. I'm trying to see if I can get that to... There it is. Looking for a little R&R, &R, Shepard? It's a nice enough place. A lot nicer than Cora's den, anyway. I wasn't sorry to hear they never reopened after the Geth attack. Oh, interesting. So, Cora's den never reopens. Oh, man. It's time to go. It's... It's time. Yes. It's not great. It's not good. Commander Commander Corey Shepard never uh, never really got rhythm. Like it wasn't wasn't like a thing she really knew about, you know. Anyways, there is a Presidium groundkeeper up here we can talk to. I got a question for you. Are there fish on the Presidium? I noticed you're one of the groundskeepers from Presidium. Do you know if there are fish in the lakes? I get that question a lot. I think it's right behind. Where's the restroom? Those are reservoirs. The Presidium don't supply, independent from the water storage tanks in the wards. The only place I know of on the station to get a live fish is the Leosanese gift shop. That's what we drink that? When I pour a glass of water, it's the same stuff tourists throw garbage in. No, they purify it first. If some solarian or human bacteria gets left in, and a Turian or Dwarian drinks it, they could die. Everything would be so much simpler if we all had the same DNA. But no, the universe loves diversity. That's a little interesting to me, uh, that that Turian apparently reacts bad to human bacteria just like Quarians do. Where is that gift shop? In the market downstairs from the bar. Leia sells aquariums. Fish are the largest pets most station residents can get a permit for. Okay. I noticed you're one of the Alright, cool. The Sorry, I accidentally Alright. Thanks for your time, bud. If you get up to the Presidium, check out the Demile flowers across from the conduit. They're coming in very nice. Oh, yeah, they call it the conduit now. Interesting. I wonder if anybody's gone to Ilos since then to actually uh to do that. So let's talk to the bartender. Any local news? Anything interesting going on around here? I serve drinks. You wanna know what's going on? Check the news. That's literally what bartenders I don't know are. Why for, humans always ask me that. What are you talking? What? I want to drink. I want the strongest thing you have. You guys ready for this? See enough. We're gonna get some some strong booze This is it's green. And guaranteed to knock you on your ass, unless you're Dextro DNA like me. If you are, it'll kill you. Um. Well. Anything else? Yeah, I want another one. Let's have another one. Where did, kids, don't do this at home. Don't don't do this at home, all right? Anything else? Not done yet. Not done. I'm impressed. I've never seen anyone get three of these. Yeah? Wow. Why not four? Anything else? A fourth one. Let's go. Hit me again. How about we mix it up? This is genuine Vicarian A. Uncut. Serving here eight years. I've never seen anyone have this stay on their feet. Oh, uh, yeah? Anything else? Nope. Yeah, you give me another one. Do it. Okay, for you, something special. This is Krogan liquor, Rincon. You'll set off radiological alarms after you drink it. Should I pour you a quad? I can handle Hell it. Hell yeah. Put more of the stuff in the, the thing. More stuff goes in. Your funeral, sister. <laughs> Great little scene. We were dead for two years. Let us live it up a little bit. 
And we're down. Oh yeah, that's it. Oh, we're, that's it. <laughs> done that are you guys mad at me <laughs> are you guys mad thanks for taking care of me i appreciate it all right as long as you guys aren't mad at me i would yeah. oh that was fun though i had a good time thank you bar barkeep <laughs> you immediately just walk over and be like hey i want a drink i want the strongest thing you can grab it no problem okay we're, we're, we're gonna get out of there we're gonna get out of there so we can also purchase the brandy here by the way just just keeping that in mind we're not gonna do that just yet so the reason i'm not actually buying this brandy for dr chakwas at the moment is because i literally literally can't afford it i'm broke and cannot afford a thousand see not enough credits can't do it uh so i guess i'm not getting that stuff just yet i love how we woke up in the bathroom fantastic so let's go ahead and uh i thought that was a i i thought that was i just ran into i'm still very drunk so anyways we're gonna head out of here we got everything that we could do in this section of the game this this zakara ward uh obviously we didn't buy everything that we could because we just simply don't have enough credits even with the boost that we got to credits um but i am trying to get in this playthrough the most unique dialogue that i possibly can so if it seems like i'm like oh going back and, and missing something this game actually has an absurd amount of unique dialogue and trying to trying to get it all and make sure that we see the best stuff uh we're gonna it's gonna be one of those things where we just kind of have to deal with not having it you know what i mean also if we use rapid transport we can actually request new party members and you can see that we can actually get uh kasumi to join us and you can actually see the abilities that she has here she has shadow strike overload and flashbang grenade which are actually all pretty good and she specializes in heavy pistols and submachine guns so i i just think it's cool that you can you can just talk to the rapid transport and, and get her in. and remember she is a dlc character that we got in the last episode so we're actually going to switch our party real quick to kasumi and jacob just because i want to show you uh kasumi we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just increase her shadow strike a little bit and give her an overload and give her master thief uh, just to kind of help her out a little bit but we're gonna make her shadow strike a little bit better it's actually really fun so we are gonna we're gonna rock those for now um and we're actually going to head down to zakara level 27 dock uh there is unique dialogue that she has as well and i'm curious to see if we can actually get her to to have that i think we might have missed our shot unfortunately we don't have anything there so if when we first came in if we would have immediately switched to kasumi she actually would have when we came in through here and the alarm went off she would have been like i didn't i swear i swear i didn't touch anything uh which i just think is funny and now we can get some unique dialogue with kasumi without cornucopia technology which will create anything the user desires. Such technology is unknown outside of science fiction literature. Something like that could put me out of business. It's just a That's little bit of character for her. Me. So, you know, I'm I'm down, I'll take it. Um, and there's actually more dialogue that we can get later, uh, later on when we come back to the Citadel, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. Now, it is worth mentioning that if we had saved the Citadel for later, there's actually a bunch of unique dialogue that happens if it's your first time going there with certain squad mates. Uh, there's one later, way later on that's super, super cool. And I'll try to see if we can do that in our Renegade playthrough, just so I can show you the scene of that. So we're not going to really worry about any of the dialogue, the unique dialogue that you can get if you bring certain squad mates here for your first time ever to the Citadel, because I do feel like story-wise, Commander Corey Shepard here would go to the Citadel first. That would be the first thing that she would want to do. So she can check in with Captain Anderson, get her Spectre status back, which was so important to her, and obviously let her friend know that she's still alive. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And we're going to take Jacob and Miranda, two Cerberus operatives. We're going to go talk to them in the Presidium and see how that goes. I can only imagine this is going to go well. Look, an Elcor walk. This meeting would be more productive if Udina was to join us. My advisor is unavailable. As counselor, I represent the voice of humanity and the Alliance. Shepard will be here and... 
Oh, Commander. We were just talking about you. It's been a long time, Anderson. I hope the last couple years have treated you right. There have been some rough spots. It's good to have you back. We've heard many rumors surrounding your unexpected return. Some of them are... unsettling. We called this meeting so you could explain your actions, Shepard. We owe you that much. After all, you saved our lives in the battle against Saren and his Geth. The Collectors are abducting human colonists in the Terminus systems. Worse, we think they're working for the Reapers. The Terminus systems are beyond our jurisdiction. Your colonists knew this when they left Council Space. You're missing the important part, Counselor. The Reapers are involved. Ah, yes, Reapers. The immortal race of sentient starships allegedly waiting in dark space. Uh, we have dismissed that claim. Are you Shepard, kidding me? No one else encountered the hologram on Ilos that told you the truth about the Reapers. Only you and your crew ever spoke with Sovereign. I believe you. But without evidence from another source, the others think Saren was behind the Geth attacks. Saren was an organic. The Geth would never accept him as their leader. They only followed him because he was Sovereign's agent. Saren was a compelling and charismatic individual. He convinced the Geth the Reapers were real, just as he convinced you. It was part of his plan to attack the Citadel. The Reapers are just a myth, one you insist on perpetuating. We believe that you believe it, but that doesn't make it true. You know, maybe I should have just let you die. Go back to Ilos and talk to Vigil. Or just look at what's left of Sovereign. It's obvious the technology is more advanced than ours. The hologram on Ilos is no longer functional, and we have found nothing to suggest that Sovereign was not a Geth creation. The Geth are capable of remarkable technological achievements. This is probably why Saren recruited them. This Reaper theory proves just how fragile your mental state is. You have been manipulated by Cerberus, and before them, by Saren. All right, I'm going to fight you. I kept Saren from conquering the Citadel. I sacrificed human lives to save this council. We are in a difficult position, Shepard. You are working for Cerberus, an avowed enemy of the council. This is treason. A capital offense. That's too far. Shepard is a hero. I'm on this council too, and I won't let this whitewash continue. Maybe there is a compromise. Not a public acknowledgement, given your ties, but something to show peripheral support. Shepard, if you keep a low profile and restrict your operations to the Terminus systems, the council is willing to offer you reinstatement as a Spectre. What does that mean? Will I need to start filing reports? That won't be necessary. This is a show of good faith on our part. We cannot become involved in an investigation regarding the missing colonies in the Terminus systems. But Spectre reinstatement shows our support of you personally. All right, I'll take it. I accept your offer. It's good to have the council on my side. Good luck with your investigation, Shepard. We hope for a quick resolution and a quick end to your relationship with Cerberus. Well, that went better than expected. You realize the Council's offer is just symbolic. They won't actually do anything. Even if they don't help, I might as well stay on good terms. True enough. Don't worry about the Council or the Alliance. I'll find some way to keep them off your back. Shouldn't be too hard. As long as you keep to the Terminus systems. Anderson, we need to talk about... Shepard. What are you doing here? Stop by to see how Anderson was doing. You don't have to cover for me. I invited Shepard here to speak with the Council. We just finished our meeting. You what? Consular, do the words political shitstorm mean anything to you? The Council reinstated my Spectre status. They're just happy I'm staying out in the Terminus systems. Yes, I could see how that arrangement works best for both sides. But you really shouldn't have taken a step like this without consulting with me first, Counselor. I don't answer to you, Udina. Why don't you go to your office and think about that for a while? Of course, <laughs> Counselor. Good day to he both just, of you. You just put him in timeout. Sorry about that. Udina's never gotten over the fact that I got the council position instead of him. Sometimes I need to put him in his place. 
So there is an option uh, during our, our talking where if you pick the line, I don't answer to you uh, talking to the council, it will actually cause, there's multiple party members that it could be. Jacob uh, uh, being the current one, he'll actually say we shouldn't be fighting. If we're going to stop the Reapers, we have to work together. But obviously that's, uh, you know, we didn't get that. Odin is just doing his job. True enough. He's got his uses. And if you want something done on the Citadel, he knows who can make it happen. Plus, he's always happy to attend all those formal diplomatic functions I can't be bothered with. And it is worth mentioning that the, the unique dialogue that you get doesn't actually change the game at all. It doesn't count for anything later on in Mass Effect 3. For the most part, that's not really a thing. It's just, you know, more completion of the story, I guess. How long did it take to get this place back up to speed after the battle? Still counting. The main areas of commerce and the most populated wards are complete. But estimates for total restoration are sitting around five years. The Keepers always surprise us, though. It's like our repairs are annoying. We'll put up an ugly new bulkhead, and in a few days, they've made it seamless. We never really thought of them as heavy lifters, and I have no idea where they get the resources. But we'd never get done without them. I'm surprised no one can tell Sovereign isn't Geth technology. Didn't they examine the wreckage? We don't have much to look at. Pieces of it rained all over the station. It was chaos, with who knows how many species combing the wards for their dead. We secured as much of it as we could, but between the keepers and a whole lot of unauthorized salvage, there's no way to account for even half of that thing. Another reason why they don't want to acknowledge what Sovereign was. That's a really bad thing, considering we know how Reapers indoctrinate folks. Last I knew, we were still fighting holdouts. They're here and there. But they are increasingly disorganized. It's long since stopped being called a war. More like cleanup. Not that you can ever discount them. But we haven't had serious casualties for months. A civilian ship will spot an enclave, and we send in a squad to clear it. They're not quite the boogeymen they used to be. Interesting. What about Caden? What happened to Staff Lieutenant Alenko after the Normandy was destroyed? Staff Commander Alenko is still with the Alliance. But he's working on a special mission. It's classified. I can't say any more. Not while you're working with Cerberus, I'm sorry. Are you kidding me? How have the last couple years treated you? Serving on the Council isn't how I plan to spend my twilight years. Sometimes it feels like I'm just beating my head against a wall. Knowing the truth about Sovereign is brutal. It's nightmare stuff. I can't blame others for not wanting to believe it. But I know how important it is. So I keep trying. Fighting the good fight, right? That's exactly why we made him counselor. Forget Udina and the council. Join my crew and help me stop the collectors. I'm too old to go racing across the galaxy. Much as I complain, I've got an important job to do here. The front line, that's got to be yours. All right. Well, it was good I to see you, go. Anderson. Of course, Shepard, I understand. I wish I could do more to help you. But if you ever want to talk, I'll be here. Just do me a favor and be careful. You can't trust Cerberus. That is 100% true. You're not something wrong, I can do buddy. For you, Shepard? No, there's nothing else, so Our I'll go. door is always open. Well, good to know. Good to know. Thank you so much. Uh, love seeing Captain Anderson hanging out. It's always a good time. And, of course, we have Jacob and Miranda here just chilling. So we'll go ahead and leave. We've already actually heard that. So, oddly enough, when you go to use this door, you you can't actually open it. It's uh, This is it for the Presidium right now. That's the only place that we can go. So that means that we've done everything that we can do on the Citadel right now, except for going to level 27, Zakara Ward 27. Uh, we found out about the fish, so we can actually go talk to these Krogan who are over here. And, uh, hi, Kargesh. Let's let him know about the fish. Why fish? What do you want? Why are you so interested in fish from the Presidium? It's so decadent. Eating a fish from the Presidium would be like screwing Shaira. I feel like one uh, of those things is a little... Sorry you're so squishy. Where are you supposed to get a decent grip? Yeah, makes sense. I talked to one of the Presidium groundskeepers. He said there aren't any fish in the lakes. What? I oh. told you. Why have all that water if you're not going to store something to eat in it? I don't understand aliens at all. 
Thanks for telling me. It's all he's talked about all damn day. I'm sorry, we broke his heart. We got 40 experience, a thousand credits, so we could actually go buy that brandy right this now if we wanted to. Crazy. And I think we will. How about we find a Tori and beat the crap out of her? That always makes you feel better. <laughs> Poor Tori. Uh, Torian. Oh, man. All right, we're going up to level 28, and I'm going to go buy this whiskey. This brandy. Sorry. Just thinking about my own stuff. All right, let's go ahead and buy this real quick. Now that we got the thousand from that other quest, and now we can just deliver the brandy to Dr. Chakwas and say, hey, we got this for you. You're welcome. But that's it. We're done with the Citadel. We can get out of here. That That's pretty much all we can do right now. Obviously, we'll want to come back to the Citadel at some point with different squad mates and kind of see what the story is. But for now, we're going to head back to the Presidium. Hey, don't worry. We will be back on the Citadel. There's actually more missions that... that are pretty heavily focused story-wise here so so weird to go from mass effect one where the presidium had so much to do on it to mass effect two where you're basically not even you're you're not even there we can't even go to really to csec just the just the sakara ward security and that's it so back on Commander, the you received a new message at your private terminal Thank you so much. Uh, this is probably just going to be the, uh, the overload, and we'll do that. But we also have a message from Samesh Bhatia, who you might remember is the husband of the body uh, of the service agent person from uh, Eden Prime who passed, and they were keeping her body, and then we got it released for him. So we have a message from Samesh. Uh, Mr. Udina offered to pass on a message for me. I wished to again express my thanks for your assistance in retrieving my wife's body. While nothing can ever banish the pain of losing Nirali, being able to see that her body was treated properly helped me more than you could imagine. I've opened the restaurant that my wife always wanted to start back on Earth. Nirali's picture hangs on the wall and Alliance soldiers eat for free. It's the least I can do to honor the courage with which both you and my wife have served humanity. Sincerely, Samesh Bhatia. I just think that's awesome. Super cool to see. And of course, we do have that other dialogue. Is an interesting addition to the crew. I can see why she's good at her work. She never reveals anything meaningful about herself. It's all on the surface. It'll be a challenge getting to know who she really is. Anyway, what's up? I agree with that. Is How's the crew? Anything, no, else anything else? Nothing right now. Let's chat. I always have time for you, Commander. Uh, we don't really have anything okay. to say. So it's worth checking anytime you get a squad mate, anytime you do a mission, anything like that, you definitely want to go and check in with your squad. Uh, and then also we can always check in with Joker anytime you come back to the Normandy, just in case he has something fun to say. So Joker doesn't really say anything. So that means that we can go find Kasumi herself and kind of see what she's up to um, on the on the ship. See, you know, where has she decided to make her home? What is she doing? You could talk to Jacob and them as well, but there's no real point. Um, he's not hes not going to say anything. Remember, Kasumi is a DLC character, so Commander. it's not like her, her story is like already. super, Commander. super uh, impactful. Just yet, anyways. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if we can find her by taking the elevator downstairs, because she's actually not on this floor. Something that's kind of interesting to me is when you are exploring the Normandy and using the elevator, it will actually tell you uh, down on, uh, on the right-hand side which team members are where. So we can see that in the cruise quarters, uh, that's where Kasumi is, which makes sense. And we also do have food that we can deliver here that we got, if you guys remember. Uh, we just got food that we could give the high-grade provisions. We can actually give that to the mess sergeant. Uh, and we can also go talk to Chakwas and, whoa, I'm stuck in the door. Did you guys just see that? I was at the damn door. That was crazy. Uh, let's find Kasumi first before we do any of that stuff. Uh, obviously, she's not going to be in Miranda's office. Uh, that would be a little strange. Miranda also doesn't Commander. offer anything new for us. There's a lot uh, to do. So we'll of just, course, Commander. We just need to go find Kasumi. I, I wish, I wish uh, that, that we would get a little bit more, but nope, nothing. That's too bad. Are you in the men's room? No, Kasumi's not in the men's room. Are you in the port observation deck? She is in the port observation deck. Uh, this is actually kind of cool. So you can you can pour your own liquor. Uh, you can do whatever you want here. And you can actually check out some of the stuff that she has the here. The Red Rose. That used to be my calling card when I first started out. In place of whatever I took, I left a single Red Rose. It wasn't until I met Keiji that I realized how silly it was. He had a way of making you realize when you were just being sentimental. It's cute. And what about this bust? I stole that on a dare, believe it or not. There was a big museum show coming to Ilium. Artifacts from Earth going on tour. Very high security. 
KG dared me to steal this. So I broke in, hacked the security, put a few guards to sleep, and replaced the piece with a worthless duplicate. They never knew the difference. My first museum job. Nowhere near the last. I love that. She's just like, yeah, for fun. Let me just let me just do that and we can examine That's this painting. That's my favorite piece. Painted for me by a child prodigy from Elysium. She was the cutest thing. She was kidnapped by slavers who hoped to sell her on Omega. I wasn't about to let that happen. I set up an idea as a buyer's rep to get a special tour of the slaver's vessel. Once aboard, I freed the girl and smuggled her off the ship. She painted that for me on the way home. I'll never forget how it felt to watch her work. It's very cool looking. Very cool looking. There's also some books here that we can Don't examine. Don't laugh. I like those books. Romance novels, crime novels, the classics. There's something about the feel of actual paper in your hands. Their musty smell. It's relaxing. Keiji used to find books for me while on the job. Some of these are more valuable than the objects he was hired to steal. I love that. I love her relationship with her with her partner before uh, before he passed. We can also pour some drinks here. Hell yeah. Listen, again, we've been dead for two years, all right? Let us enjoy ourselves. Shepard, the women's restroom is on the starboard side of the ship. <laughs> Edie trying to be like, hey, just letting you know, you get messed up. All right, that's the last one, though. Uh, Edie already telling us that where the bathroom is, so we can we can go ahead and leave now that we're a little wasted. Let's go ahead and talk to Kasumi now People that we're super drunk. There. I hear it all. That's it? I usually travel hidden away in cargo bays. It's nice to be able to look out a window Whoa. for a change. Mess Sergeant Gardner might just be an evil genius. Emphasis on the evil. People think he's a bad cook on purpose, like he's trying to teach them a lesson. <laughs> I love they think that. his ramen is okay, but it's really hard to ruin ramen. Yeah, Kasumi's really a big sure fan of ramen that'll myself. come up later. Not much call for thievery aboard a ship. back later i'm sure i'll have more to talk about okay well i guess that's our cue that's everything that we could get out of kasumi right now um we have one more painting actually that, that i almost missed has a special place in my heart an art collector hired me to steal it when i got there the painting was gone on the way out i saw it being hauled off by another thief i chased him down tackled him and took the painting that's how kg and i met we never did turn it into our employers that's cute. That's really cute. So we can actually go now that we kind of we kind of heard how how bad Mess Sergeant General uh, his food is gardeners. There's also the people that are eating over here, and you can kind of like listen in and, and hear them talk about how bad the food was, which is what we did earlier. But we can also just go ahead and Commander, talk to him. Those provisions you provided were perfect. I owe you. I've already thrown together some of my calamari gumbo. Here, try a bite. All right, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll try a bite. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. Truth told, it's based on an Asari recipe. Seems a little cannibalistic to me with their tentacle heads and all, but they ain't no good <laughs> grub. Anyway, thanks again. You really came through. And we'll get the we'll get the How food can and I we can talk you, to him. Say you need anything? Ready? Absolutely. Since you set up my kitchen with proper supplies, thanks again. Hey, no problem. I won't take any more. Back to work. And then potentially, maybe we can get these guys to talk about the food. So we actually won't be able to hear any of the dialogue about the food yet after we just delivered it, but that's fine. I do want to show, though, that we have, we can feed our fish, and we have the fish that we actually got. You can see the little feeder there, see the food coming in, and our, our fish that we bought while we were on the Citadel going and eating it, which is super cute. And then you can actually see that we also have our models here. You have the um, the Destiny's Ascension there. It's super cool. Both of the Normandies, it looks like. Awesome. Uh, I love to see that. And then we also have the music being on, of course. Uh, but then there is right here a space hamster. Trying to see if we can. You can kind of see it. It's really dark there. Kind of hard to see, but but it is it is there. It is the space hamster from you know from uh, from Baldur's Gate. So I'm actually going to take off the recon hood for now, just because um, it kind of keeps. It, I don't. I don't really like it. It keeps uh, getting in the way of my 
my face when we do cutscenes, and I, I don't know. I want to see her face. I don't want to see her just having a, a recon hood. So we're actually going to go and talk to Dr. Chakwas now. I got you your brandy. How may I help you, Commander? I've got I have your a brandy. present for you, Doc. Sari's ice brandy? You didn't. <laughs> Thank you. I always regretted not opening that original bottle when I still could. I won't make the same mistake again. Why don't we open this bottle right here, right now, you and me? Yeah, let's do it. You crack open the bottle. I'll get the glasses. I thought Olenko's biotic display might have broken Jenkins' back, but Jenkins pops up and yells, That was awesome! <laughs> oh, Jenkins. Soldiers like him make the Alliance great. Cerberus lacks the same enthusiasm. With your service record, you could have gotten a tour of duty on any Alliance ship. Why'd you really leave? Maybe it's less about leaving and more about staying. As a military doctor, I mostly treat people who are in bad shape. Often they die. And if I can help them, they move on. Either way, they leave. Don't you have any friends or family? No, not lacking friendship. Just stability. Jeff, Joker will always have Vrolic syndrome. He would never admit it, but he needs my help, and he always will. I wish it weren't, but sadly, it's true. Treating Joker gives you a kind of stability. So does this ship, even if it's a copy. Or, hell, maybe it's you, Shepard, our removable center. A place for a person to stop and catch her breath. Or maybe I'm just happily drunk. Would it hurt if it was simple like that for once? Here's to simply being happily drunk. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Such a great little moment between Dr. Chocolate, who's like, you know, not a main character here. Of course, we're a little, we're a little woozy now. We actually got a Metagel upgrade capacity for that. Uh, that did unlock that. And Chakwas is sleeping it off. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I wish that we could see the brandy, but unfortunately I don't, I don't see the bottle of brandy anywhere. So uh, I just, I, I just, I think that whole moment is just so cute with the two of them and getting to see that camaraderie, especially talking about Jenkins, who like we didn't really know much about Jenkins, right? Uh, just that he was he he was the, the first red shirt guy, right? So now that we've done that, we could go explore the galaxy because that's everything that we can do on the Citadel. We're already done with that, believe it or not. Really short time there. Of course, we can check to make sure that our uh, fuel probes and all that is open now i also want to show that um we're gonna use our so if we go this way you'll actually see that our fuel starts depleting as we proceed uh this is anytime you go through a cluster itself so we'll enter this system we're not going to do the quest yet but i thought i would just i wanted to point out the uh the the, the fuel mechanic if you will back to here and don't worry you actually can get not only can you buy more fuel and probes and everything at a fuel depot uh but you know it's unlikely that you're gonna run out uh but we can use the mass relay and there's another thing that i want to do in this episode and that is to go explore the normandy crash site i do feel like out of all of the things that shepherd would do going and checking in with shepherd uh with anderson i should say is is like top of the list but i actually also think that going and exploring where the Normandy last its final resting place is definitely something she would do. She's pretty sentimental in that way. So we're going to head to the Normandy crash site. Now it's easy to write off this 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 mission as as boring or anything, but I find it to be necessary. 
Eingana is one of the few systems, one of the few planets in this system where the Normandy crash site is that has a good uh, source, uh, good resources. But more importantly than that, it's also one of the few planets in the game that offers Element Zero as a source that you can you can actually get. And that is very, very good time to, you're already here, might as well explore it and get some Element Zero. So with those planets scanned, we're going to head to Alcara the final resting place an anomaly. of the Normandy. So as we get here, we're going to see that not only is this place rich in resources, but there's an anomaly detected as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll throw a probe out. This is going to give us a ton of different stuff, but you can see that it's still saying anomaly detected. There's, there's something going on here. Launching probe. Launching probe. I have found something. And we found the anomaly. Scans confirm the wreckage of SSV Normandy on the planet's surface. No life signs or mechanical activity detected. Stable landing zone located amid the crash site. Once you've completely scanned it and depleted it, we can land on Alcara. You know, it's... Well, you'll see. That's gotta be a lot for Shepard to take in. Even the Mako is still there. Our pride and joy. So we can explore the crash site now. We are solo for this mission. None of our squad mates actually join this. This is, I like to think of this as Shepard's loyalty mission. So we can collect dog tags. That was for Rasamund Draven. Uh, who we don't actually know, uh, but there are these dog tags that we'll have to collect throughout the area. And each time you'll see a part of the destroyed ship, Shepard will kind of have a flashback to seeing it. And uh, we can go ahead and place a monument here. A monument to the Normandy and those that fell more dog tags this one belonging to Abhishek Pat, uh, Pakti there's even more that we can find as we proceed through here it's very ominous and some people think that this is like a boring mission or and I guess you know there's no action really but like this is a really big deal, seeing, seeing the destruction of a ship that was so important to Commander Corey Shepard. We have another dog tag that I just saw. I think it's in the ship itself. You can see the cockpit here. You can go grab this dog tag. Another 10 experience. That one belonging to Talitha Draven. And the cockpit. Luckily, Joker is still with us. Could you imagine the outrage that if Joker fell in this, in the Normandy? Oh, man. It'd be a very sad day. So it looks like the bodies were recovered, but the dog tags were not. Or maybe the, the, the bodies were just thrown out into the, into the space, into the space. Raman Madeira is the tag that we just got there. We'll also discover that there's some refined element zero, probably from the ship itself. We can destroy this, actually. And collect a dog tag that was sitting inside a box uh, for Carlton Tux. Down there is the refined element zero that we can grab, which we want. 150 element zero is, is useful for the research stuff that we have going on. And remember, we're looking for 20 dog tags, so you know, it's, it's kind of monotonous, I guess, but still, Jamin Bakeri. I think that this is like a pivotal part of Shepard's journey 
uh, and kind of accepting what she has to do with Cerberus. So obviously, that's not, you know, her mission with Cerberus isn't something that she takes lightly. It's not, she doesn't enjoy them. She doesn't want to work for them. She's fought them on so many occasions in Mass Effect 1. To be working for them just, it's got to feel pretty bad. So right over there, we actually saw that there was an N7 helmet, much like the one I wear at the beginning of every episode. Of course, she's going to go grab that one real quick. This will actually take its place in her cabin as well. Shepard's lost in seven helmet was recovered. So that's her helmet. Uh, unfortunately, none of her other armor is around at all, but her in seven helmet is very interesting. The galaxy map, much better now. Maybe Navigator Presley's tag being nearby. One of the only people that we know that was named that passed away. Addison Chase, 7 out of 20 dog tags. We have another data pad over here that we can read. Uh, spoke to the commander about this. All these damned aliens aboard the Alliance's most advanced ships. I don't trust them, especially that damned Azarian a Quarian. What does Shepard think this is, a zoo? With the Quarian, it seems she's on some kind of pilgrimage, trying to improve the lot of her home ship. I can understand that. I would babysit my children or anything, but if she has to be on board, I suppose that's not too bad. And I'm taking a look back at past entries. How blind I was at the time. I came on this ship firmly believing humanity was on its own in the galaxy. Shepard brought all these aliens on board and there's no way we could have accomplished what we did without them. I'm proud to say that I would die for any member of this crew, regardless of what world they were born on. That, my friends, the journal of Navigator Presley, who was very xenophobic when we started uh, Mass Effect 1, was not a fan of aliens on the ship we always try to, you know, keep him open-minded, uh, and it looks like he, unfortunately, was able to come to terms with it, but uh, perhaps a little bit too late. Grab another one there, Harvey Gladstone. Thank you, Harvey. Thank you for your service. We have another dog tag here that we can grab for Silas Crosby. We also have the Mako here looking pretty torn up. Impaled on the ice here. That thing killed a lot of geth for us. Got us a lot of experience. Mass Effect 1. We also have a glowing tag over here that we can go grab. Luckily, they are pretty glowy. And you can kind of see where they are. This one being the tag for Jermaine Barrett. We can also find some refined element 0. 135 of it. Again, super useful for what we're doing here. You can actually walk out on this area as well. Almost looks like you can't, but you can. We'll come over here where these pods were, if you remember. Similar, very similar style in the Normandy 2 now, which makes sense. And we can grab this tag. That belonged to Orden Laflamme. 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 You can see another dog tag there, this time belonging to Monica. And I do recommend destroying all of the crates. Collect the dog tags that are hidden there. Raymond Tanaka found in that there. And there's even more on this side that we can go check out. Another dog tag waiting for us right here. Belonging to Helen Lowe. And inside here, it looks like potentially the mess hall. Seeing the person who died on uh, on Vermeyer there, Ashley. We can grab this dog tag. So that was actually the armory where she was saying, "No, this was this was the mess hall." Okay, that's what I thought. I thought that was the mess hall. It's definitely pretty haunting to walk around the crash site. You know, I. On a lesser degree, for anybody that's ever gotten into a car accident, after the, your car is towed, if it's totaled and you see it again, it's it's very surreal. It's very uh, it's it's different. It's changed. It's... But it also it protected you. It kept you safe. We can find another dog tag here, belonging to Robert. Only four dog tags left. Hopefully, we can find them all. 
we will find them all. We have another one right on the other side of these rocks by the shuttle that we can grab. This one belonging to Caroline Granado. And we can destroy this crate for yet another dog tag, this time belonging to Amina Waberi. And then we can grab this element zero as well. Only a few more dog tags left. We have another crate over here that we can go explode. Obviously, all of the crates have something in them that we can get. Another dog tag, this time belonging to Marcus Rico. That's 19 out of 20. And the final one is all the way out here. Not near any debris, really. The furthest out that you can get, we can grab the final tag, which belongs to Hector Emerson. So we actually did pick up Charles Presley. I just somehow must have missed that. But we do, in fact, have it. That is, oops, uh, that is all of it done. Uh, the Normandy crash site is complete. We found all of the lost crew and everything that we could do there. We saw all of the flashbacks. We have the N7 helmet and we've placed the monument, which means that this mission is now complete. And what I'd like to consider Shepard's loyalty mission, the first loyalty mission that you can do, although it is DLC, uh, is is done. And now, and now she can focus on what she needs to do, which is uh, stop these collectors from attacking bases uh, or colonists, I should say. So we're gonna head back to the Normandy after a pretty uh pretty sad day and we do get our mission summary screen a monument has been placed at the last resting place of the ssv normandy on alcara and the families of all missing crew members have been notified of their ultimate sacrifice Shepard's lost N7 helmet was recovered. We get 200 experience, we get 3750 credits, and 500 element zero. A short mission indeed, but one that of course Commander, leads to new things. So we can go ahead and check out our messages here. Admiral Hackett says, the Alliance was grateful to receive the information you found at the Normandy's crash site, and we've sent it out to the affected families. By finding those dog tags, you have provided peace of mind for a lot of people, Commander. I thank you on their behalf, as well as peace of mind for us. And my friends, that is everything that we're going to do in today's episode of Mass Effect 2. Uh, I know that it's it's kind of off for, off to a slower start, but I wanted to make sure that we kind of do these in a in a way that I feel is relevant to Commander Corey Shepard in her specific story. And I feel like I feel like we're doing that. So we didn't really get any experience or anything from that. Um, we're still level seven. Uh, we have 680 experience to go until we do level up. Uh, but we are going to Omega in the next episode. We're actually going to immediately recruit a new teammate, a DLC character, in fact. And uh, we've already seen letters about him or emails about him. Uh, Zaid. Zaid is going to be joining us. And I'm very excited for that because he's very cool. And he has some awesome dialogue that we're going to be seeing. Next episode is a big one. I'll see you guys then. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, never give up. Never surrender to the council because I still can't believe that they are still not believing us. Are you kidding me right now? Bye, everyone.